this in this part of the video we are going to see just uh, introduction of the microprocessor so what is a microprocessor a microprocessor is a programmable which means you can do programs okay small small programs you can do uh, so what is a program in order to achieve a particular task we give commands so those commands can be given to the microprocessor in order to achieve that so it's a programmable integrated device that has computing and decision making so an integrated device means it can compute as well as it can take decisions and based on the decisions it can do one process or another process and so that's what here so integrated device that has computing and decision making capability similar to that of the central processing unit of a computer so it's a mini computer a microprocessor is nothing but a like a mini computer it's a computer so inside a computer itself we have the microprocessor so that part only we are going to study in this paper so it's a small a mini computer so a microprocessor resides inside a computer and it consists of arithmetic uh, and logical units in order to uh, achieve a particular task the microprocessor is a multi purpose programmable clock driven which means inside it has clock signals for synchronization so after one instruction only the next has to do after completing of an instruction the next so how to synchronize them so for that not only that there are different uh, devices are there so how to coordinate for all those things we have the clock signals then register based register is nothing but for storing of information temporarily so for that we have a register so you can define a microprocessor it's a multi purpose programmable clock driven register based electronic device that reads binary information if when i say binary instructions it is nothing but zeros and ones from a storage device called memory so inside the microprocessor there is a memory also so from that memory it takes the information process it so how it will take it takes in terms of binary and accept binary data as input and process the data according to those instructions and it give back the result so the microprocessor it communicates and operates in binary numbers zeros and ones which are called as bits so each microprocessor has a fixed set of instructions we have already seen it has binary instructions so what are all the binary instruction so that is what we call it as a fixed set of instruction and we call it as a instruction set there are many microprocessor called zilog motorlo intel etc so uh, these are all the companies they have their own microprocessor so in order to work on these their microprocessor they have their own instruction set so each microprocessor has a fixed set of instruction in the form of binary patterns called a machine language as it is difficult for the humans to communicate with zeros and ones the instructions in the form of mnemonics which form the assembly language is made for a given microprocessor will we will see this point elaborately so first before that we will see just a general block diagram of a microprocessor so this is what actually a microprocessor that is it consists of an arithmetic logic unit alu is nothing but arithmetic logic unit and register array these are all temporary registers which can store the intermediate result then and that. then control unit which communicate with the alu register array and the outside io uh, that is input output devices and then the memory so the control signals it controls the whole of all these things so when it the data has to be transferred from one register to another register or from this register to io or register to memory how it has to be transferred at what time it has to be all those things can be controlled by this control unit so there are various signals in order to achieve that so all those things we are going to study in due courses so how the data transfers from io device to register from here to memory from memory to register etc 
that is through various lines called system bus. So we have communication lines and we generally called as buses. As bus in, in a regular terms, you can say that a bus is used for communication. Yes, we travel from one place to another place using buses. So it says that is why the name here as bus. So the bus are used for traveling of information from one place to another place. So for that we use, so that is why the name coined as bus. So ALU, this we'll see uh, uh, what these devices will do. So arithmetic and logic operations like add and subtraction will be carried over by this ALU. Not only that, decision making is also be taken by this arithmetic and logic unit. Register array, it has lot uh, registers uh, say here we have in this micro what we are going to study is microprocessor 8085 by Intel Corporation. It has nearly 14 temporary registers. Okay, so that's why they are going to store temporary data during the program execution. Then control unit. This is a unit. It provides necessary timing and control signals. It controls the flow of data between the microprocessor and the peripherals. So memory. Let us come to this. It stores information such as instructions and data in memory format, that is zeros and ones. Subsystem of microprocessor based system, subsystem includes the register inside the microprocessor. It is a subsystem of this microprocessor. But this also will be in a present in a microprocessor. So read only memory. So within that, we have two types ROM and RAM. ROM is read only memory, RAM is random access memory. So when I say primary memory, then main memory, all those things indicates only the RAM, that is random access memory. And in read-only memory, it is a volatile, it is a non-volatile memory. And what do you mean by a volatile and non-volatile? Volatile means when the power goes, that is current, it goes, then everything stored there will go. So RAM is a volatile memory, whereas ROM is a non-volatile memory because the one read it is only a read only memory. The data stored in this memory, even if the power goes, it will be stored here. So what we do is in this, the it is a very small memory. So very basic information will be stored, which are necessary for booting a system. So the one which does not need to be altered, the information which does not need to be altered, only stored in this room. So where the operating, when there's, what do you mean by booting of a system? When the operating system is to be, when you switch on the system, where it has to find the operating system, uh, where it has to be loaded into the main memory, from the secondary storage into RAM, where it has to be loaded, all those informations will be present in room. So once it is returned, it will not be altered. So it is used to store program that do not need alteration. Then random access memory is used to store program that can read and alter like programs and data. So other thing is input output. That is what we have seen. This is input output, which is nothing but our keyboard, printer, etc., uh, which the microprocessor communicates with the outside world. Then system bus. So communication path between the microprocessor and peripherals. That is nothing but a group of wires. So that we call it as a system bus. Now. Let us come to the, it is a little bit uh, introduction to the microprocessor and we are going to study in detail regarding all these uh, parts. So before that we'll see what's the semiconductor, how the microprocessor now, the one which we are using now, how it generate from the previous days till this day. So uh, previously we had transistor and all. So when you build a microprocessor the transistor, it nearly occupies, you should have studied in your text so that it occupied a whole room, okay, a big room it occupies. But with the invention of semiconductor technology, the size is reduced to a very small thing which we are having now. So here we can integrate so many circuits in a single chip. We call it as a chip. An entire circuit consists of several transistors, diodes, resistors, everything can be designed in a single chip, that is a small chip. When I say small chip, it's like this. So here, this is a chip and this is a, this is called this black 
thing is said to be seven. In this, millions and millions of logic circuits can be uh, uh, can be designed inside us. So that is why we are able to design a micro. This is actually a microprocessor, 8085, and we are able to design it to a small, very small one. That is because of the semiconductor technology. So with that, initially it, uh, we call it as a first. Uh, first generation, we call it as a small scale integration where only one logic gate is uh, implemented or designed inside a single chip. Then comes a medium scale integration where nearly 100 logical gates in one single chip. Then large scale where 1000 gates and very large scale and super large scale integration where millions and millions of gates in a single chip. That is in this world only we are now. So how does a microprocessor work? The microprocessor we store the information just like you take imagine like a page okay in your notebook we have pages so in those pages we start writing from the top of the page the next line the next line next line and so on so just like that a memory is a one page where we write instructions sequentially the next next line that is what here says the instructions are stored sequentially in the memory the microprocessor what it will do, it takes the data from that. The, in memory, we store the program or the instructions. Then the microprocessor from here, it takes the data from memory, put it in its temporary registers and execute it with the help of arithmetic and logic unit. All these are done by using a control bus and how we transfer through the system bus. So the microprocessor fetches the first instruction from the memory decodes it so for example uh, add a and b so for that it will load that instruction what is my decoding it understand okay it convert it into a respective code decode it according to that so for example if i write it in a mnemonics or assembly language then it will convert it into its binary code that that's what decode understand that code and know the meaning of that code and execute that instruction then Whatever is sitting in the instruction, that will be carried over. That is what executes. So, the sequence of a machine cycle is fetch. Fetch is nothing but take the information from the memory, then decode it and execute. These are the sequence which will be carried over for all the instructions. So, one by one instructions will be fetched, decoded, executed. Then the next instruction will be loaded and so on. This is how a microprocessor works. So before going through all those machine cycle and all, we'll see the difference between a machine language, higher level language, and assembly language. So what is meant by a machine language? The computer can understand only binaries, that is zeros and one. It can understand only zero and one, that is high voltage and low voltage. So that is said to be the machine language. But as a human being, how we can write program in zeros and ones so but we have to communicate the machine with zeros and ones because machines can understand only zeros and ones but it is actually not possible for us so what the designer do is they design some instruction set so we'll see that so the programmer has to communicate only in terms of zeros and ones but it is difficult to do so thus the computer manufacturers they devised an English-like word to represent the binary instruction of a machine. So they designed the microprocessor designer. So if, as I said, the Motorola, Zilog, Intel, all those manufacturers, what they do, the, for the microprocessor which they manufacture, they devise the exclusive instruction set, okay, which, which is similar to an English-like. So we can understand, say for example, move the value from this to this. This we can understand, yes or no? But that move will be converted into zeros and binaries by the uh, underlying technology. That's what. So, represent the instructions of a machine. These instructions are also called as assembly language. So, assembly language is specific to one machine. So, since it is given by the manufacturer, the assembly language is specific to a particular microprocessor only. For example, in Intel, one instruction works means it will not work for Zillow. It will be different. So it as it is given by the manufacturer, 
the users the programmer has to learn that assembly language of a particular machine and uh, carry uh, and write coding so assembly language are specific to one machine and cannot be executed or not transferable to other machine to overcome this general purpose language to overcome this general purpose language or high level language like c++ python or device so for example i want to work in a sun micro system a sun micro system will have a different microprocessor whereas a windows based system will have may have a different microprocessor so like that so if i buy a company of a zilog that microprocessor will be different but still we are able to work python in all these thing that is called a general purpose language so the general purpose language is on top of all these things and they will design the compiler or a interpreter so that they will be converted according to the local microprocessor language so that is what so those thing that is why they are all called python or uh, they are sorry they are called as a general purpose or a high level language so if i know c++ and if i load a c++ compiler I, uh, there is no need for me to worry which microprocessor they use the compiler will convert it according to the local microprocessor so that's why they are all called high level language so a microprocessor now coming to our microprocessor 8085 which you are going to study in the syllabus the microprocessor 8085 it has 8 bit data it stores in memory 8 bit of information so each line like i already i told you you have to imagine like a page so when you imagine like a page each page each line in one page that may be say imagine some 20 lines or that so each line can store you can write 8 bit of data so you have to imagine like that so 8085 it has 8 bit data so how many data you can store so combination so 2 power 8 equal to 256 different combinations of uh, instructions can be returned so for example here if you take this so this is what 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 bits with 8 bits you can form two different 256 combinations so this is an instruction that increments the number in accumulator by one whereas this is an uh, writing like this this is another instruction that add the number in register b to accumulator so if you say that this is nothing but you will write it in a hexadecimal so th this is for 3 and this is meaning is c so while entering data you will be entering as 3c okay in hexadecimal this 3c will get converted into this and which will be a under, which can be understand by the microprocessor and it executes and so on so assembly language just now i told you what is assembly language in order to communicate with the microprocessor the manufacturer device uh, language depending upon the particular microprocessor so the program is written in hexadecimal when you write program in hexadecimal like the one which we have seen remembering 3c is what is this 3c it's an increment the number in accumulated by one this is the meaning of that when you write 3c so remembering this as 3c 80 that is also very difficult so that comes the call call that comes the mnemonic mnemonic say for example i just say this is uh binary information and this is equivalent hex and for this an equivalent mnemonic is inr a already we have seen it increments the number in accumulator by one so how you can write it in a mnemonic increment inr a a is meant for accumulator so increment the accumulator accumulator is a register okay which is present in the arithmetic and logic unit that we will be seeing in short so this is one register b is another register temporary registers so increment a this i can remember inr a i can remember but i we can't remember 3c as well as this so we will write inr a and then the insert bay with the help of the instruction code given by the respective microprocessor we can convert this into 3c and this is the data we will enter into the microprocessor which gets converted which will be decoded and which will get converted into binary by the respective microprocessor so if we if we know this coding that is enough this will get converted into 3c which in turn converted into binary so similarly add b 
here what we have seen add stands for addition and b stands for the content in the register b this says that add b means add the content of b with the accumulator because accumulator is a default register for any addition or any subtraction it has to be done only with the accumulator so what is the meaning of add b add the content of b with the accumulator and store the result again in the accumulator so that is the meaning of this so that can be done so for that we have the hex code as 80 so microprocessor has 246 such bit pattern like this 3380 and so on it has such bit pattern amounting to 74 different instructions for performing various operations so both machine language and assembly language these are all considered as low level language this also is a difficult so next comes the high level language because this inra add b this is also specific to a microprocessor but i don't want all those things as a developer i i know c++ i don't know the assembly language so how i can do with any system yes that comes the high level language how the english like words in high level language are converted to binary language of different microprocessor the answer is through another program that is what this now i have said compiler or interpreter so the respective compiler you have to download or you have to install and then within that you can write your c++ or python programs which can be converted into the respective binary format of the respective microprocessor these programs accept high level language as their input which we call it as a source code then translate the source code into machine language for the respective microprocessor this translation is called the object code then troubleshooting also it is very easy with the high level language than the assembly we, it is very difficult to find where error occurs when you are writing in an assembly language whereas it is easy to trace out where you have made mistake in a high level language